Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. So since the title of the video, video suggests that it's going to be a crash course, so I'm going to be a little fast and I hope you guys catch up or you can watch it in slow motion, alright? Uh, but uh, I'll go a little faster. So in Sharpless epoxidation, what happens is basically it's a epoxidation reaction of functionalized alkenes, alright? Functionalized alkenes. What do I mean by functionalized alkenes? Basically, uh, those alkenes which have some kind of functionality attached to it. Like for in this, in this case, we have a allylic which OH, allylic hydroxy group attached to the alkene and that's why you know the sharpness epoxidation is only carried out on uh, most in most of the cases it is carried out on functionalized alkenes all right now it requires three three steps one is your um, catalyst it requires one catalyst it requires your chiral um, reagent all right in this case it's dithyl tartrate all right and then we have a peroxy acid which leads to the uh, which leads to the um, uh, epoxidation right so basically this is, a, this is our oxidizing agent um, dithyl tartrate is our chiral reagent and which leads to the enhanced selectivity of the reaction and then this is our catalyst titanium catalyst the structure for the titanium catalyst i have shown over here so in case some some of you are interested you can see the uh, complex structure of the catalyst um, all right, so now let's see what how do how do we get the enantiomeric selectivity or the enantiomeric excess whatever you like to call it uh, Like how how do we get that? So um, to find that out first of all you should know what is a re phase and C phase All right, what should what is a re phase and what is a C phase and how to find out in case of alkenes you should know that re phase and C phase, okay, so C phase is basically your minus dithyl dot rate your minus DET your minus DET attacks from the C phase and your plus det attacks from the uh, reface all right so like over here in this case we have been given plus det so first of all let's find out what is the reface and what is the c phase so in this alkene um we'll see the stereochemistry at this alkene at this this particular alkene this one over here which is next to the oh group all right so you always see the uh, re or c phase from this alkene which is next to the um next to the oh right so um, in this car to this carbon we have one carbon over here that is attached and then we have one carbon on this side that is attached right so these two carbons are attached to the carbon to which we are seeing the re or c phase uh, now to this carbon we have an oxygen group attached which, which is of higher priority so this carbon will be given priority number one and this this carbon will be given priority number two right according to the Kahn and gold prelog um, rules right and then hydrogen will be given priority number three so if we find out the uh, rns if we try and find out the rns i mean it's it will it won't have a rns nomenclature but just find out whether what how is it going so one two three so it's going like this so this is s nomenclature right because it's anti-clockwise so this s corresponds to c phase and this s corresponds to c phase all right so this corresponds to c phase now since this is a c phase and i told you that r plus uh, so basically what that means is this is a c phase means the place where you are sitting and watching this molecule from is a c phase that is above the plane is the c phase because you are, you are watching in front of the screen so you are above the plane basically so this is your c phase all right and i told you that the dihydride tart rate it it uh, it acts from the um, re phase so the place we are the place where you are sitting is the c phase and behind the screen is the re phase and since the plus dithyl tartrate attacks from the re phase that is why your epoxide is going to be formed below the plane all right so the epoxide is going to be formed below the plane and that's how you find out the stereochemistry in sharpless epoxidation reactions all right so many of you many of uh, the the educators have seen they teach re and c phase uh, by showing by you know by telling that dithyl tartrate attacks above the plane or below the plane that's absolutely incorrect you have to see whether it's the re phase or the c phase and then accordingly uh, you have to manage what kind of reaction will take place all right so let's see some of the reactions i'll take a few examples and then the rest you can solve on your own so we have this compound over here let's talk to take talk about the first example um so let's let us assign the priorities so this carbon we are talking about over here uh, right so this will be given priority number one because to this carbon we have oxygen attached uh, this will be given priority number two this carbon because uh, here also 
here also we have a carbon so both the places we have a carbon but this carbon is attached to another carbon whereas this carbon is attached to three hydrogens so this will be given priority number three so again one two three so it's going like this so that means the place we are, where you are sitting is the C phase because it's anti-clockwise so the place we are sitting is the C phase and we are adding plus so these are different kinds of um, chiral catalysts like plus DMT then there is diisopropyl tartrate that is DIPR diisopropyl um, tartrate DIPT sorry DIPT diisopropyl tartrate so they will also have plus and minus so whenever you see the plus sign uh, just think of rephase um, so this the place we are sitting is the C phase that is above the plane and the attack is going, going to take place from the rephase uh, so that means the attack will take place from below the plane and you'll have the epoxide formed below the plane all right and now i'll discuss the second example and the third and fourth you can try it out on your own okay again the same thing um this carbon will be given priority number one right um this carbon will be given priority number two and then we have a hydrogen over here which will be given priority number three so again this is again the c phase and so that means the place we are sitting is the c phase but now we are adding minus diethyl uh, diisopropyl tartrate now minus signs means minus attacks from the c phase and right now the place you are watch where you are watching the molecule from is the c phase that is above the plane is the c phase and that is why in this case your epoxide is formed above the plane so i hope you understood the concept of sharpless epoxidation it's very simple all right and it is used for functionalized alkenes just remember that now the next uh, we are talking about is jacobson epoxidation and this is particularly used for unfunctionalized alkenes so you can see there's no functional group attached to the alkenes and that is why this is important so sharpless epoxidation is only used for uh, mostly used for uh, functionalized alkenes and jacobson, jacobson epoxidation is used for unfunctionalized alkenes all right so the concept is pretty simple we are adding bleaching powder naocl all right NaOCl then we have the Jacobson's catalyst which is a manganese catalyst now just focus over here this is the manganese catalyst uh, and we have Mn over here so what does this bleaching powder what it what the bleaching powder does is it it uh, you know gives away its oxygen to the manganese so you can see there's the oxygen attached right so this oxygen comes from your bleaching powder okay now you can see that it has tertiary butyl groups this is one tertiary butyl group uh, on the left side then there's a tertiary butyl group on the right side and then there's a uh, there's tertiary butyl group on this side and this side so it it there's a lot of steric hindrance and that's why alkene is not able to approach from the sides so you can see the alkene is not able to approach from the sides similarly the alkene is not able to approach also from below the plane so the only place the alkene can approach is from this side this side over here and the the stereochemistry of the epoxide depends upon the stereochemistry of this group okay this group so in this case um, both of these groups are R configuration but I've taken the example of SS Jacobson's catalyst so if um, if over here the stereochemistry is SS then it will be the SS Jacobson's catalyst and if the stereochemistry is RR then it will be RR Jacobson's catalyst uh, so in the exam if such question comes up um, then you just need to find the stereochemistry or if they have mentioned it's RR or SS then you can do it accordingly so if if it's the SS Jacobson's catalyst what you need to do is simply you have to draw this as the product that the epoxide is formed above the plane and like this the same way the way I have drawn the product all right um, so the mechanism of this uh, if you need, want to know the mechanism the mechanism is quite simple so we have R group um, then we have the alkene and like this and then we have a MN which is attached to oxygen like this and then there's a concerted mechanism there's a transition state form like this okay there's a transition state form like this and then uh, your epoxide is formed all right so the epoxide is formed above the plane in the case of ss jacobson's catalyst and the stereochemistry of this epoxide will be opposite in case of rr jacobson's catalyst so all you need to do is find out the stereochemistry at these centers if it's ss uh, then the epoxide will be formed above the plane and if it's ss then the epoxide will be formed uh, the stereochemistry will be opposite of what we have over here right the third case is a she epoxidation now in she epoxidation always remember again it is used for trans alkenes trans unfunctionalized alkenes trans unfunctionalized alkenes okay so it's used for trans unfunctionalized alkenes and um, the stereochemistry of the epoxide that is formed will always be rr if you are using this cat catalyst this is a d fructose derivative okay this is a d fructose um, derivative so the stereochemistry um, 
the stereochemistry of the um, epoxide will always be RR. All right, just remember that whenever you are carrying out cheap oxidation, uh, the epoxide that epoxide will be formed which has a stereochemistry RR. Okay, so just remember that. Uh, okay, and um, how do you find the stereochemistry of uh, epoxides? So I I, I know a lot of students would have a lot of doubts on how to find stereochemistry of epoxides so that I will try and cover in some other video if you are interested because try and find out the stereochemistry of this epoxide I am sure you might struggle alright because the finding the stereochemistry or the RS, RNS nomenclature in case of epoxides is a little tricky um, so if you, are, if you are finding trouble please comment down below and I will help you out alright so I hope you found this video useful. I was a little fast because I wanted this uh, wanted this to be a short video. And uh, do let me know your feedback and please let me know if you want me to um, find, help you out with the nomenclature of epoxides because it is a little tricky. All right. So thank you so much for watching and all the very best.